was that? Next to the last song. Start up chorus. my cares into your arms I can't see past this storm but I'm counting on a faithful God faithful God you hold my life secure and all my days are
Good morning, Prince of Peace. That was really, really bad. Good morning, Prince of Peace. That's so much better. I hate when they do that, but that first good morning was not so great. So, so good to have you here. Of all the places you could be, we are so glad you're here on this beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, worshiping with us and our prayer is always that this worship service will be a blessing for you and your families. A special welcome goes out to uh, all of our visitors and guests from Academy 4. You know who you are all over the place uh, and the families of these students from McWhorter and these families. Uh, we want to thank you. A special uh, welcome to you. And we're going to hear more about Academy 4, Academy 4 and McWhorter as the service goes on. But a couple other quick announcements. June 5th to June 9th is VBS. Uh, there's a, a QR code there to sign up, volunteer, and donate items. They say, you know, it takes a village. VBS does not take a village. VBS takes an army. So uh, if you have the ability to help, everything from uh, being a teacher or cooking or feeding the uh, volunteers to security to basically if you have a pulse you're qualified and I think that means just about everybody in here except the guy on aisle four that I think is sleeping back there oh, oh. but uh, so check with uh, that QR code or Jessica Jancha and she can give you she's up there on top Jessica check with her and uh, she'll plug you in and the last one uh, note I had here for announcements, we had a town meeting this morning from 9.15 to 10.15. It was really a very informational and it seemed like it went really fast and I want to thank everybody that was involved. If you were not here for that, feel free to go and check it out on the YouTube uh, feed. When will that be up live? Or It's already up. So not now, but when you get home, feel free to uh, pull that up, the town meeting, uh, through the same link that is for uh, worship off of our website and you can watch the town hall meeting and it, it had a lot of information where we came from where we're at where we're going to um, and it was kind of fun so with that being said i encourage you at this moment to stand up greet those around you and maybe say hello to some of you who don't know especially the visitors
pray together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you that you have made us alive, made us alive in you, a people called out of sin, called out of darkness, brought from death to life. And we pray, Father, that you would be merciful to us, sinners who are in desperate need of your love your amazing grace. We come to you receiving your kingdom like little children, like infants, because we can do nothing of ourselves. All we can do is receive. And we root for the nourishment of your righteousness and yours alone, because we know if there's anything that we bring to you, it's our sin. So we know that we know that the only remedy is for you to wash us in the blood of your son, a blood that cleanses us, that makes us white as snow, holy and blameless before you, because we hold on to your promises by faith. We are those who in our, in our arrogance, thinking we've performed pretty well in our flesh compared to our neighbor. In reality, we've practiced lawlessness as we have focused on our external performance. So Lord, we need your honesty. We need your truth, the full weight of your law, the full weight of your command to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect, bearing down upon our flesh, showing us how much we need your grace and mercy, creating the space for the gospel to move in and become incredibly good news to our hearts. And as we, as we rise up again, as our flesh rises up again, and we ask, what shall we do so that we may work the works of God? You answer us as you did your people nearly 2,000 years ago. This is the work of God, that you believe in my Son, whom I have sent. And Father, we know it's only your resurrection power that can save us. And pray that you would help us to taste and see that you are good, and that no matter the hardship in our struggle with sin, no matter the failure when we've fallen again, God, help us to remember. Help us to remember we can always stand. And you're never stopping, never giving up, always and forever love. We pray all these things in Christ's name. All God's people said. Amen. Darkness tries to roll over my bones. But sorrow comes to steal the joy I own. Brokenness and pain is all I know. I won't be shaken. I won't be shaken. Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing in your love. My fear doesn't stand. Stand in your love, my fear doesn't 
You know, Prince Peace, the world uses words like logic, coincidence. We use words like power of the Holy Spirit. You know, we're all different. We look different. We act different in a lot of ways. Some tall, short, different colors. The one thing we all have in common is that the Holy Spirit brought us to this place today. Every one of us. The Holy Spirit got us up this morning. The Holy Spirit walked us through, even though we were arguing at home trying to get over here, even though some of us may have argued in the car all the way over here. The Holy Spirit says, come and brought you here, even though, or even in spite of our own indiscretions of pushing back all the time and arguing and, and just finding stress. The Holy Spirit guides us and says, you're in a safe place right now. We come here to receive forgiveness for our sins. We offer forgiveness to each other. We have a Lord Jesus Christ who says, confess your sins to me and I will give you forgiveness of those sins. I know life's hard. I know life has got all these challenges. I know you've maybe lost your job. I know you're going through a really tough season health-wise. I know maybe someone recently passed away in your life. I know all those things. But for the, the thoughts you have, confess those things to me, and I will give you forgiveness of all those sins. So I would encourage you, as the words come up on the screen, let's corporately confess our sins to the Lord and receive that blessing. Please join me as the words come on the screen. We say, gracious Heavenly Father, you sent your Son to be our Lord and Savior. Now you call us to be disciples in his name. Today we confess that we have fallen short of that calling. Instead of growing in your word, we have allowed the world to shape us. As a result, we know that our actions have offended you. Instead of serving others, we make decisions based on what's best for us. We now acknowledge our sins and plead for your forgiveness. Well, brothers and sisters, there's good news this morning. 
Because Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for the forgiveness of your sins. As called and ordained servant of the word and by the command and in the stead of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I do forgive you your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And what we say to that is we join together as people have for 1,700 years in boldly professing who we are as Christians and reciting the words of the Nicene Creed. Please join me as the words come up on the screen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son and together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, I look for the resurrection of the dead and the light of the world to come. Amen. I invite you to be seated, and we have a special faith lived out message uh, this morning from the Prince of Peace Christian School sixth grade theology class. So, sixth graders, take it away. Theology. At Prince of Peace Christian School. Hi class, today we are reading a parable about a Pharisee and a tax collector. Open your Bibles to Luke 18, 9 through 14. Wesley, will you please start reading it for us? Okay. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. What's a Pharisee and what's a tax collector? Well, a Pharisee is a well-known leader in the Jewish faith, and a tax collector collects taxes. But what are taxes? Hmm, let's tell the story a little differently. In so class, the American Revolution began because the colonists were unhappy about no taxation without representation. Kaylee, you need to pay attention and be respectful. Now, does anyone have any questions or comments about the British or Americans? Drayton? Did you know that approximately 92,000 pounds of tea were dumped into the harbor at the Boston Tea Party on December 16, 1773? Be quiet, Brayton. You're such a dork. <laughs> dork is not in this generation's lexicon. Kaylee, sit down. You have been very disruptive today. Anyway, I need to pack, pack back your quizzes from last week. Yes! So another 100. <laughs> Alright, we are now going to have quiet reading and prayer time. Dear God, thank you that I'm such a great student. Thank you for another perfect score because I'm the best in my class. I'm so glad I'm not rude or disrupted like Kaylee. Amen. Dear Jesus, I'm having a really tough time this week. I'm struggling to stay focused 
and kind in class, and I really need your help. I didn't do too well on my plays, and I want to be better. Please forgive me for when I am mean, and help me to do better tomorrow. In your name I pray. Amen. Oh, I get it. Being part of God's kingdom has nothing to do with us earning his love, does it? We need Jesus to cleanse us from our sins by his blood and sacrifice on the cross. We are all like Kaylee in this story. We need to humbly ask Jesus to forgive us. That's right. Jesus really takes our perspective on what it means to be good or righteous and flips it upside down. He washed us clean because we cannot do that ourselves. I'm glad to know Jesus forgives me when I mess up. Me too. Me too. But I still don't understand why we have taxes. Please pray with me. Dear Jesus, Dear Dear Jesus, Jesus, thank you for living a perfect life for us. Thank Thank you for living a perfect life for us. We know we are not perfect. We know we are not perfect. And we need your forgiveness and love. And we need your forgiveness and love. Thank you for washing away all of our sins. Thank you for washing away all of our sins. Thank you for flipping our lives upside down. Thank you for flipping our lives upside down. And calling us righteous. And calling us righteous. Because of your sacrifice. Because of your sacrifice. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Prince Peace, we are a BYOB church. Bring your own Bible. If you have them, wave them proudly. We're going to start at Luke chapter 18 this morning. Todd McBride is going to lead us in the reading. And this will be uh, the basis for Pastor Micah's message this morning. Again, Luke chapter 18. Todd. Thank you, Pastor. Yes, today's reading is from Luke chapter 18, starting at verse 9. The parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. This is the word of the Lord. Well, good morning, Prince of Peace. I want to welcome those of you that are joining us online. Whenever it is that you're joining us, we welcome you in the name of our Savior, Jesus. So uh, where are all my Academy 4 people at? Raise your hand. I see a lot of you. Uh, would you clap for, if this makes sense to you, this, this red coat makes sense to you, would you clap? The rest of you who have no idea what this means, um, if, and you think I'm out of my mind, would you clap? Oh. Yeah. Not sure what that says, but uh, hey, anyway, so uh, I am what they call the MC for Academy Four at McCorder, and so I wear the red suit. Now, those of you that are saying, where are the red pants? Here's the deal. 
the red pants are really, really uncomfortable. And if I had to wear them more than an hour and a half, I probably wouldn't wear them. So, you know, it's all for the fourth graders, right? And so you get the jacket, but not the pants. So, well, I'm excited to get into the word this morning. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts would be pleasing and acceptable to you. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Your name is Jesus. We give you thanks and glory and praise for all of those things that you bring to us, including the forgiveness of sins. And all God's people said, amen. amen. So we've been in a sermon series now for a few weeks that is called the Upside Down Kingdom. And the idea is that the kingdom that Jesus has inaugurated through his death and resurrection is one that is, that is not like anything that we know or experience See, in his kingdom, the, the last are first, the weak are, are strong, the humble are exalted, and yes, even tax collectors are forgiven. That's really great news for us, and, and the kingdom that Jesus has inaugurated is, is an incredible kingdom, but it is upside down. And the way that, that he often teaches about this upside-down kingdom is through parables. Now, sometimes if you read parables, sometimes they're kind of tricky. You kind of read it. There's some that are like, yeah, I get it. And then there's others that, what is going on there? What is, what's Jesus trying to teach here? And they're kind of tricky. And so to help you with that, at least th for this series... Uh, one of the things we've done is there is a Bible study uh, that meets on Sunday mornings. And what they have done as part of their Bible study is they take some of the parables of Jesus and they kind of imagine them into and rewrite them into our contemporary language. So what they've done is, I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but on the e-letter, right underneath where the reading is, you can click on that and then you can see, you can read a modernized version of the parable. So like the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. You can read that. And they, will, they have done that for every single uh, parable in this series. So I hope that you check that out. And I tell you that because I just want to celebrate with you some of the great work that is happening in some of the Bible studies. That they're not just, uh, they're, they're doing some great work and there's a lot of great growth. So I say that to celebrate that, but I also say that to encourage you that if you're not in a Bible study, get in a Bible study. So if you, if you get the e-letter, just check out the e-letter. You can find all of the different Bible studies, or you can uh, reach out to Pastor Sauber. Pastor Sauber will help you get connected in a Bible study. Or do probably what I would do. Just go up onto the third floor at 915, walk around, stick your head in the room, and find a Bible study that fits for you. But, but we really want you to get in a Bible study, get connected uh, to the Word in community. So there are some techniques that you can use as you go into the scriptures and you read parables. There are some techniques that you can use that will help you understand the parable maybe a little bit deeper. One of those is what this Bible study group is doing. And they're, they're taking the, the, the parable and they're kind of reimagining it in our kind of contemporary context. In other words, kind of like imagine Jesus just landed here and he started teaching parables. Like, how would he teach the parables today? What are the examples that he would use that we would say, oh yeah, I get it, right? Kind of that idea. Another technique is to go into a parable and then ask the question, what is shocking about this parable? What surprises you? What don't you expect? Like, for example, it's shocking that a Samaritan is the true neighbor. It's shocking that the father runs to welcome back his prodigal son. It's shocking that somebody would not forgive their neighbor after they have been, give, been forgiven an abundant amount of forgiveness, that they would now go forgive, forgive somebody else. That's shocking. We, you wouldn't expect that. It's shocking that the shepherd, who has a multitude of sheep, would go to a great extent to save even one. That's shocking. And a lot of times we go into these parables, and if you can kind of think about where is it, where is there this time where it's shocking in that parable, that's probably where you need to spend some time and dig a little bit deeper. But another technique is to try to imagine or try to think about 
Like, who are you in the parable? Are you the prodigal son? Or are you the elder son? Are you the one who showed up early for work? Or are you the one who showed up at the last minute? So which one are you? Are you the Pharisee or the tax collector? Which one are you? Are you the Pharisee or the tax collector? How many of you say I'm the Pharisee? Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Thank you for, for one person who is honest. The only person in here that's honest. Well, we're going to get to it because the reality is that every single one of us is the Pharisee. Now, sometimes what's hard is it's hard for us when we go into this, this parable about the Pharisee and the tax collector. It's hard for us to see that we are the Pharisee or to connect with the Pharisee. Part of the problem is because if you've ever read the Gospels, you know that the Pharisees are like the bad guys. But at the time of Jesus, as he's telling this parable, the Pharisees aren't the bad guys. They're the good guys. They are the people who you'd say, I want to be associated with them. I want to be like them. So in many ways... Jesus is telling this parable, inviting you and me to see ourselves as the Pharisees. I think the other challenge is that we look at the Pharisee and we say, you know what, I'm not that bad. I mean, I'm not that, I'm not that mean. I don't treat people that bad. And then the scriptures say to you, really? Really? You, you might want to think about that, that maybe you do treat people that way. Jesus told, it says in verse 9, he says, He told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. So what does this word contempt mean well, this word means to, to treat other people as if they have no value, like they're not worthy. It also has this idea of that you look at people and you see what's happening in their life and the challenges that they're going through and you look at them and you say, you deserve that. Like, I'm glad that that's happening to you because after all that you've done, that's what you get. That's how you treat people with contempt. So are you the Pharisee? Am I the Pharisee? So I'm going to show you seven pictures. And they're just going to come on the screen. I'm not going to say anything. But I'm going to show you seven pictures. Not yet. But you're going to see them, and I want you to look at them, and I want you to look at them deeply, and I want you to study them, and I want you to think about how does it make you feel, and I want you to pay attention to how it makes you feel. So, starting with this picture. So how do you feel? Were they worthy? Are you worthy? How many of you are Pharisees? Don't raise your hand. But the reality is 
we'd have to admit, I would have to admit, along with one other person here, <laughs> I'm a Pharisee. You see, this is what God's law does to us. It crushes us. God's law calls you out, calls me out. It strips you of all the hope that you have in yourself. It completely and utterly exposes you for the sinner that you are and the sinner that I am. But that is not to say that the law is necessarily a bad thing. Because for all that the law does to reveal the things that are happening in you, the good news is that the law also serves to drive you to Christ. It seeks to, to say, I am totally undone, exposed, broken, helpless, at fault. I can, I can no longer hide. Now where do I turn? And the Lord Jesus, what he does is, yes, his word calls to you and calls to me and says, you are the Pharisee. But the invitation of Jesus is to come and to be the tax collector. In this parable, it might be hard for you to see that, that you're, the, you're the Pharisee and I'm the Pharisee, but I think sometimes it's equally, if not harder, to sometimes see that, that I and you are the ones who need Jesus to wash and to serve us. I mean, you can see those, those pictures, those foot washing, pe you can kind of see those people, but what if it was you there? How would you feel about that? feel like, wow, I'm not worthy of that. And the truth is, of the matter is, you're not. I'm not. But I'm worthy and you're worthy because of what Jesus has done for you in your place. And so the invitation of Christ is to come and be the tax collector. In chapter 18, verse 13, it says this, but the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Not only is the invitation to be like the tax collector, but to repent like the tax collector. See, I don't know about you, but here's typically how, I, how repentance works for me. God, I messed up, but is it Okay. And we kind of hope that there's this transaction where God says, yeah, Mike, it's no big deal. And that's kind of how we think about it. God, sorry about that. You're good. And then you move on. But the reality of it is that when we come to repentance and we say, God, I, I messed up. Is it okay? What Jesus is saying is, no, it's not okay. In fact, it's so not okay that I've gone to a cross to suffer and to die so that you might have new life. And what the, what the tax collector is saying here, I want you to get out your pen. If you have a pen or, or highlight it in your phone, where it, says be, where it says, God, be merciful. I want you to underline those two words, be merciful. Because this tax collector is not just simply saying, God, are we good? What he's saying, the, the literal translation of this word is, cover me with the blood that has been shed. That's what it means. It means, God... I am a sinner, now I need to be, I'm totally exposed, and I need to be completely covered with the blood that has been shed. That there needs to be sacrifice on my part that I cannot pay on my own, and I need that to cover me and to cleanse me. That is what this, that, that's what this tax collector is saying. Far more than, I'm just sorry, it is, I have sinned. And I need to, I'm totally exposed, and I need to be covered with the blood that has been shed. So then what is the, what is the outcome of what Jesus hopes to accomplish with this particular parable? Like, what, what are we supposed to kind of take away from this? Well, I want you to just think about three things, and we'll close. Number one. Is the invitation of Jesus here is to see who you are as a sinner. 
and to, and to come and repent and to see, Lord, I need to be covered again and again. I need to be made new. I need the righteousness that is apart from me, and I need that righteousness to cover me. That's number one. Number two is to see who Jesus is, that he is the one who delights in covering you. He is the one who delights when, when you're exposed and you come to him and you say, Lord, I, I have sinned. I've fallen short of your glory. And he comes and he clothes you with his righteousness. He delights in that. And then finally, now how do we then go live? How do we live out that truth? Isn't it true that that truth ought to show itself in how we see other people? That we see that Christ has served me, he served you, And he's offered that invitation to come and be that tax collector to receive the forgiveness of sins. And then you see and you realize, I'm not worthy of that. And then how does that then transform how you see other people? The truth of the matter is, that's the call, right? To not see people with contempt but to see people that have an enormous value, the value of the blood of Jesus Christ himself. And it transforms how we live now. So my fellow Pharisees, (laughs) welcome to the foot of the cross where the blood of Jesus covers us, makes us clean makes us new, and he calls us to go with that transformed vision of people. I pray it would be so among us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your incredible, incredible grace and mercy, even for a sinner like me. And Lord, I pray that that our lives would be a living testimony. It'd be a faith story. And to see that these parables, they're that. They're faith stories. And not to just see these as, as faith stories from a long time ago, but to see it as very similar to my own faith story. That I was once far from you. Lord, come by your Holy Spirit to repent to say, Lord, please forgive me for seeing people the wrong way, for seeing people through my eyes rather than your eyes. And Lord, would you cover me again and again with the blood that has been shed so I might be made new again and again. We all ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing.
darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his untainted grace. In every high and stormy day, my anchor holds within. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Back about halfway through the whole COVID timeline, uh, we entered into our worship schedule, a time of generosity. And the reason we put that in there was because, quite frankly, it, really we prayed about it. It's sort of the essence of what Christians are. We are called to be generous in all the places where we live, work, and play. If you want to be generous, generous to the ministries here at Prince of Peace, the information will come up on the screen. Feel free to support us uh, fiscally in the ministries that we're doing. Um, but if you're traveling, you worship somewhere else, you're streaming and you worship somewhere else, I would encourage you, support the ministries where you worship as well as where you live, work, and play. But that's from the financial side. But we're also called to be generous with our time and our talents, not just our treasures, but our time and our talents. And today we're celebrating Academy Four. And what this is, this wrapping ourselves around these fourth graders in particular at McWhorter Elementary. So we have a short video just to let you see it. <laughs> at this time, up, Barb, if you could come up here, Renee, if you could come down here. Um, and as they're coming down here, just to what Academy 4 is, you have the video there, but it's mentors leaning into these fourth grade students. Fourth grade is a year where they start putting systems together, and start learning and, and developing uh, value systems. And, um, and fourth, they've seen fourth grade as the year to really love on these kids. And so um, we want to uh, thank everybody who was involved in that this year. Um, I don't want to point anybody out uh, purposely just because we are live and want to respect the privacy but um, of all. But it's, uh, if you have any questions, uh, the program goes from fall to spring, and it's one hour a month. And if you'd like to participate in it and say, you know what, uh, maybe this coming year, uh, maybe I could do that. And I can tell you, 
Uh, I've done it. My wife Jennifer has done it. Uh, so many in here have. And um, you'll be blessed beyond belief uh, in how you learn to love these children in such a short amount of time. And um, so with that being said, um, if you have any questions, these are the ladies right here to look for that. If you are a member of, if you've been a volunteer for Academy 4, I would ask you to stand up at this point and to be recognized. If you are a um, family member of a volunteer, I would ask you to stand up. If you are a staff member at McWhorter, I would ask you to stand up. Um, and anybody who has participated in Academy 4, if I didn't hit, or if you're part of McWhorter, I would ask you to, to stand up at this time. And let's just say thank you to them for everything they've done this year. <laughs> Amen. And uh, before you, no, 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 no. Before you sit down, uh, the way we roll here at Prince of Peace is we would like to uh, pray a special blessing over you. And so I'd ask, uh, as you're standing there, if you're able to, uh, everybody else, I would uh, ask you, raise your hands uh, in unison as we uh, pray over them uh, today. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this ministry. We thank you for uh, your awesomeness, Lord, and sending your Holy Spirit to guide these 130-some volunteers to make this thing happen and, uh, and open up the doors at McWhorter Elementary, open up the, the hearts of the the teachers and staff and the students and their families to welcome in this program and to walk with these students at this Title I school. What a blessing it is uh, to walk through that. I pray, Lord, that through this time that all of these mentors feel blessed. We pray that the seeds we planted uh, with these fourth graders blossom and bring, bring these kids a richness, a sense of purpose, a sense of identity, identity at the foot of your cross, saying you as the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, we ask for strength in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, ladies. At this time, I would encourage uh, everybody else to stand up as we go to our Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you are the way, the truth, and the life. We thank you, Lord, for being God. We thank you for the air we breathe the water we drink, the food we eat. You're the provider of all things. We thank you for the courage you give us to walk into places that the world tells us we should be scared of. With the power of your son, Jesus Christ, we have no fear, just fear in the Lord. And that's a love and that's a reverence. We thank you for that. Lord, as the school season is coming to an end, we pray for strong finishes. We pray for McWhorter Elementary, as well as our, our school here, Prince of Peace Christian School. We pray for all these students as they're finishing the school year and they're saying, okay, so what next? As these students are graduating, graduating high school, finishing their classes, their last time of being in a high school classroom. And they're saying, I don't even know where I'm going next. We pray that your Holy Spirit gives them strength and nourishment and guidance in understanding, knowing that you've got a plan for them. Even if they don't have a plan yet, you have a plan for them and that that plan is greatness. We pray for our college students as they're entering final exams and very stressful times of getting projects done and travel back to their homes. We pray for your Holy Spirit to guide them and give them strength and confidence as being children of the one true King. We pray, Lord, for our good friend Howard Littlejohn, who is a stalwart lover of your son, Jesus Christ. We pray for health from the Holy Spirit to heal him as he's going through such a tough time right now in the hospital. We pray for him for mind, body, and soul, that he finds truth in your son and your son only. Lord, we thank you for this town hall we had this, this morning from 9.15 to 10.15, giving us updates on where our church is at. We thank you, Lord, for not only having your Holy Spirit bring us in faith to you, but we thank you especially for the abundance of allowing us to be leaders in a congregation, especially here at Prince of Peace Lutheran Church on Midway Road. 
We pray, Lord, that through all of these blessings you give us, that we are lifted up, we see you and you alone. As your disciples came to you and said, Lord, teach us how to pray. We say, remember us in your kingdom and teach us what it means to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Here in just a minute, brothers and sisters in Christ, we are going to share the Lord's Supper. If you are a baptized believer and you believe as we do and in the Lord's Scriptures that He is present in, with, and under these elements where He says, take, eat, this is my body, take, drink, this is my blood, we receive this for the forgiveness of sins, we encourage you to come to the rail when the ushers uh, escort you out, come up and enjoy in community the Lord's Supper. If you're of a different tradition, you're traveling, you say, I don't even know what he just said. Um, we would encourage you, and you're uncomfortable, still come to the rail, fold your arms, receive a blessing of the Lord, and then seek out one of the pastors or elders after service. And we'd love to have that conversation with you. And if you'd like to receive Lord's Supper then, and you're comfortable, we will uh, certainly share the Lord's Supper with you at that time. Because brothers and sisters in Christ, it wasn't any night, it was the very night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. When he'd given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then much in the same way after supper, he took the cup. When he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, take, drink of it, all of you. This cup is the blood of the new covenant in my blood, which is being shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. May the peace, love, and joy of our Lord and Savior Jesus be with you all. Amen. I invite you to be seated. I heard a thousand stories of worth. Think you're like what I.
blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and purify you to one true faith, life everlasting, to pardon his peace. Amen. Brothers and sisters, immediately following this service to my right, to your left, we will have a series of prayer warriors over there, our Stephen ministers, our pastors, our elders. If you have something in your heart you'd like someone to pray over you, we'd love to have that opportunity of doing that. If that's not your vibe and you just want a few moments to come up here and meditate on the word, Come up to the communion rail and take all the time you'd like. This is the last service. So this is your church, Prince of Peace. You are the church, the ecclesia, the assembly of believers. This is your place. Feel comfortable here. We wish you a very happy week, a blessed week. As we go out into the world and we take this, this joy of salvation, this, this joy of promise to a world that so desperately needs to hear it in all the places where we live, work, and play. So with that, receive the final benediction of our Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. Lord, look on you with promise and favor and give you his peace today and always. Amen. 
Sing it out, church. It's your bread and our love. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your bread and our love. So we pour out our praise to you only. Peace of Christ go with you. Have a blessed week. You are dismissed.